Many of the old people or the older generation accept this as part of aging. Initially, may wake up like once in the night. Now it become twice, then three times. Then maybe reach a point where it's almost like almost every hour, every 30 minutes. Hi, I'm Dr. Chao Weijin, Department of Urology, National University Hospital. I have with me today Mr. Vijaya. He's one of my patients and uh, together we will uh, share with you the topic on benign prostate hypertrophy, BPH in short. BPH is a benign enlargement of the prostate gland. It's a very common disease that actually affects men. In Singapore, the prevalence of BPH is about 40% for men 60 years and above, and the incidence increases with age. For men with uh, enlarged prostate, I think the most common symptoms that they present with actually with, will be a slowness in the urinary flow. Um, they also come to me for increase in the number of time they need to pass urine, especially in the night. And that affects their quality of life, that affect their sleep. Because I cannot stand really because too frequent and my sleep is disrupted. That's the main reason. It's, it is very common uh, for a patient to experience uh, nocturia, which is basically the increase in the number of times they need to pass urine in the night. This is something that a lot of uh, people or a lot of elderly men take it as part of aging and they, they don't really uh, seek any medical help until it got worse, whereby they affect their quality of sleep, quality of life, or when they heard about this condition being discussed either in the newspaper or in some media or maybe among friends, like a coffee shop chat. Traveling you, uh, one place to another. For example, as, as he says, you're taking a bus journey. In between, you cannot control the urine, or no, it comes out, no. So that is a very critical point. You know, my, my uh, underwear all wet because of the urine. Can, cannot control, it, it comes out. So by the time you reach, it's too late already. I think this is probably a issue with uh, awareness of this condition. Because many of the old people or the older generation accept this as part of aging. And to them, uh, going to the toilet a few more times in the day, a few more times a night is part of the aging process. Because one thing about DPH is that it's a slow growing process because it doesn't happen overnight. So gradually, initially, you start off with maybe you need to go to the toilet more frequently. You may have a bit more urgency to go to the toilet. Initially, you may wake up like once in the night. Now it becomes twice, then three times. Then maybe you reach a point whereby that's what Mr. Vijay was saying that you know it's almost like almost every hour, every 30 minutes. Yeah. So it's a slow, it's ongoing process. So and and patient will kind of like realize over time that it's getting worse. I think what, what is important is that they should be they should see the doctor early rather than, than late and suffer in silence. Because many times uh, if they pick up the condition early. There are many ways we can consider treating this condition. We can start off simply with medication, and then if the condition worsens or patient cannot tolerate the side effect of medication, then we can move on to other line of treatment, which includes surgery. Let's start with medication. I mean, medication is usually my first line of treatment for most patients. Uh, it's convenient. They just pop a pill, let's say, uh, one, uh, one pill a day. And what it does is that how I, I look at treatment is really look at the severity of the disease and how much it affects the patient. So when the patient sees me in the clinic, I'll evaluate the patient, I'll ask him about the symptoms, assess how severe the symptoms are and also uh, how much it impacts on patient life. Then I'll do a quick physical examination for patient whereby we'll, we will assess the size of the prostate gland and see whether it has affect the kidney function. Because if the prostate is very big, sometimes it may affect the function of the kidneys. Then I'll do a flow test for the patient to assess the urinary flow. From there, that will give me some idea of the severity of the, of the disease. And from there, then we'll discuss with the patient the treatment option. And if I were to start on medication, there are two class of medicine or two types of medicine that we can offer a patient. The first one helps by relaxing the bladder neck. And that actually helps to improve the urinary flow. I think there's something that Mr. Um, Vijay actually tried. And there's another medication that can help to string the size of the prostate gland. And that is also another med medication that also will help. But that medicine probably is slightly slower acting and it takes a bit of time uh, before you see the full effect. So usually I'll explain all this to the patient and then I'll explain to them how the medicine works 
what's the side effect of each medication and from there then, then we will let the patient try the medication I usually give the patient a trial match for about two months and I'll assess them again but if the patient couldn't tolerate the side effect or if the medicine doesn't really work well for them then of course we will move on to the next line of treatment which will be surgery Actually, it's no problem. I took it during the trial period, but it's slow reaction. That's why I'm asking him for the surgery, which are the good method of uh, surgery, what are the surgeries you have and all that. He explained to me all in detail. He showed me the three types of uh, surgery also, which is more saver, which is uh, high risk and all that. Yeah, well, actually, uh two main group of surgery. The traditional surgery, which is TRP, and then the newer, uh, less invasive, the minimally invasive option. So the total of three surgeries that we discussed. Okay. And during that session, I actually show uh, Mr. Vijaya the videos, and then we talk about the pros and cons of each of the procedure in details. Yeah, yeah I decide, yes. I told Dr. Chua, okay, I want this one. Because it's safer, and then it's not much of a problem. I think Mr. Vijaya actually took some time. He took about a week. Yeah. He, he went yes. home, discussed with family members, and came back a week later. So he actually did seriously yeah. consider Got all it. the three options, and then uh, weigh the pros and cons before he decide which is the one that he liked to go for in the end. Mr. Vijaya has gone through is a water vapor treatment, which is one of the new minimally invasive uh, treatment options we have for patients with enlarged prostate. The procedure that we can be done in the day surgery setting. So Mr. Vijaya come in the morning, had the procedure done. We we'll observe him in the in the day surgery ward for a couple of hours to make sure everything is okay, and then after he's he was actually discharged on the same day. The main thing about this uh, procedure is that it actually uh, injects steam into the prostate gland, and that caused. Uh, uh, some swelling of the prostate initially. So patients who are on this treatment needs to be on a urine catheter for 7 to 10 days. I think Mr. Vichai was on this for about 10 days, the catheter. And um, throughout this period of time, I think the most inconvenient part is having the urine back. So the first three days, he had the urine back. By the day four, we changed to a valve. And that actually uh, helped in terms of the uh, moving around. Without the back, it's actually easier to move around in the house or you can just wander out. Uh, I was in the day surgery, uh, Dr. Chua did the surgery, then after that, yeah, I was in the day ward for a few hours there, then uh, initially after the, the sometimes, you know, the pain started, then I called the staff nurse to call Dr. Chua to give me some medication to, to kill the pain, and then he prescribed. Uh, some Panadol or what, and then give me that will be better, then I just carry on. So I go off at about 8, 8 plus. I mean, it's okay, suffering is suffering, but, but after that, uh, it's all relaxed already. Very good, actually. Very smooth. The main, main help is the reduce the number of times you wake up in the night, right? Yes, yes, yes. That is very important. Yeah, so so, so now Mr. Vijay can sleep better. Yes. And you know, I think the daytime, you also don't have to go so often in the... Correct, yeah. correct. First thing on what you really facing the problem. And then I will ask you to see a doctor because this is something Nobody can say, only the doctor can classify what is a problem. I will tell them the truth. Instead of wasting time, you better see a doctor and get it treated early. I will give them the confidence saying that, you know, I go through, there's nothing to worry about, there's, there's no fear, nothing, there's no pain. Only a short period to suffer, that's all. After that, back to normal and very convenient.